Fibber, McGee, and Molly show. NBC and Paper Make Pen bring you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. Join Fibber and Molly in just a moment. The tradition of religious freedom and of religious worship in America goes back to the very founding of our country. The cornerstone of our Declaration of Independence is the statement that all men are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. So in these days of world crisis, when our nation and all its citizens need spiritual strength and guidance, all of us should think again of what religion means to us and to our country. More than anything else, it is religious faith that protects our families, our homes, and our nation. It is religious faith that makes our way of life possible. And it is religious faith that makes that way of life worthwhile. During this month of November, people of many faiths are joining in a great Religion in American Life campaign. Be sure to attend and support the church or synagogue of your choice. Light their life with faith. Bring them to worship this week. When Mr. A.G. Bell brought the human voice and the telephone transmitter together, he really started something. Get a load of a local subscriber killing a few idle hours right now. Yeah, her Molly's at her club meeting. Been gone all afternoon. Yeah. Sure, you know how the girls are when they get to Gavin at them meetings. They're probably having a discussion on the question of having less discussion between discussions so they can have more time for discussion. Oh, I think she's coming in the back way now, Herb. I'll see you at the office tonight. So long. Is that you, kiddo, or...? You're back, your boy! Oh, it's you, old-timer. Who are you expecting, son? Or ain't you expecting? I was expecting Molly. She's at her ladies' club meeting. And... I know. I just came from there, Johnny. Delivered some groceries to Mrs. Spradley. Never heard so much arguing in my life. About parliamentary procedure? No, about the grocery bill. Bill's too high, Miss Bradley says. Oh? I says, Miss Bradley, I says, I don't make them out, I just collect them, I says. Fifty-nine dollars, please. That's a very witty answer. He says, don't talk so loud, I have a meeting going on in the den. So I says, in the den? I says, and she says, yes, in the den. And I says, what is it, the Lions Club? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they ought to put you on the stage. Yeah. Better still, they ought to put you under the stage, in the trunk. So then she says, don't talk so loud, please. Yeah. I'll discuss the grocery bill with you some other time, she says. So what'd you say? I says, Miss Bradley, I says, if you ain't got the money for the grocery bill, maybe one of the girls out there will loan you the $59 because... Because what? That's as far as I got, Johnny. When I come to the word $59, she clapped her hand over my mouth with three $20 bills in it, she shut me up like a saloon on election day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a pretty smart bill collector. Yep. Oh, I almost forgot. Huh? I seen your little woman over there at that meeting, and she sent you a message. Molly, what'd she say? Said if you wasn't busy, you could pound the round steak for her and peel some onions. Said she'd be a little late. Oh, boy, steak and onions. That's the round steak there. I just brung it. Good. I wonder what she uses to pound it with. Uh, got yourself a scout axe? An axe? Well, that'd cut it to ribbons. You don't know much about cooking, do you? Nope. You don't know our round steak either. <laughs> Happy chopping, son. So long. Oh, oh, thought we cut off. No, Herb, she's not home yet. Oh, your wife too, huh? You said it. Hold it, Herb. She's at the door now. Come on in, kiddo. It's not locked. Hang on, Herb. Uh, I'll meet you in the kitchen, Molly. I'm on the phone. You can get dinner started if you want to. I'm starving. The steaks are all pounded and ready to go in the skillet. Looks like I may live after all, Herb. <laughs> nah, I never say anything to her. I just look kind of hurt when she's late like this. Yeah. Well, I'll see you at the Elks tonight. Bye, Herb. All you got to do is season them steaks and throw them in the skillet. I hate to put you to work the minute you come in, but gee whiz, it's 5.30. Well, it's okay, Mr. McGee. I love to cook. Mm. <laughs> My gosh. Hey, what are you doing with that meat? Hi, mister. You like a lot of cinnamon on your steak, Mr. McGee? Do you like it, a lot of cinnamon? 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 No, no, of course not. Oh. 
Look, uh, I'm afraid there's been a little misunderstanding here. I, I thought you were Mrs. McGee. Oh. You mean you don't want me to cook your dinner, Mr. McGee? Oh. Gee, I could cook it just wonderful, I betcha. Well, I'm sure you could, sis. Although cinnamon steak is kind of a new idea. But you see, Jeannie... Hey, Mr. McGee. Mm -hmm. I bet you Richard will like cinnamon on his steak when I grow up and we get married. Mm-hmm. I bet you will, I bet you. Richard, huh? Mm-hmm. Is that the Richard that delivers our paper, Jeannie? Sure. Mm -hmm. He's an older man, of course. Oh. He's 12. I'm going to marry him when I grow up, Mr. McGee. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Does, uh, does he know about this? Oh, no. Oh. No, mister. I haven't told Richard. My mom always says the husband is the last to know, she always says. Oh, I see. Well, I don't think she was talking about... Besides, it. Richard's got a bicycle. He might get away. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a pretty smart move. A girl can't be too careful these days, mister, I always say. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard you say that, sis. Because, did you know that the ratio of, um, eligible males to, uh, yes. eligible females is only one and one third men for five of us girls? Hmm? Did you know that, hmm? Is that so? Where'd you get them statistics? I got that from the Saturday evening test, I betcha. You mean Saturday evening post? No. Oh? No, I mean the lady who comes over every Saturday night to play cards with my mama. That's what my daddy calls her. <laughs> Saturday evening test. Oh, yeah. Well, you're old or you're father. Hey, that sounds like your fiancé now, Jeannie. Oh, boy, that's him. Hey, Richard. Richard, it's me. Wait for me, Richard. Can I run behind your bicycle, Richard? Can I run, Richard? <laughs> ah, they sure make a handsome couple. Well, I hope Richard likes cinnamon mom on his steak because, boy, he's going to get okay, it. Hey, I'm home. Come on out in the kitchen, dearie. I'll get dinner started. Oh, hi, kiddo. You almost lost me. A very nice-looking young lady just dropped in here and offered to cook my dinner for me. But I said no. <laughs> yes, I saw her chasing a bicycle. Well, I'm sorry I'm late, sweetheart, but the meeting went on. <laughs> What are you doing with the pen, McGee? My paper, mate? Oh, just popping the point in and out. Look at that. Just flick a button and it's ready to write. Flick it again and it's out of the way. <laughs> you do have fun, don't you? <laughs> you know, that's one of the first things that caught my eye about the paper, mate, pen. No cap to get lost. The thing that caught my eye was no more ink smeared all over my hands and clothes and in my hair and on the rug and You're all... the boy who can throw it around, too. Not with the paper, mate, though, because this pen can't leak. You can't smear paper mate writing because it dries the minute it hits the paper. That's why school principals all over the country approve it. And bankers, too, don't forget. Paper mate pens are used in over 7,000 banks every day. Imagine. Just look at that baby. And it cost only a buck sixty-nine. So look, if you haven't got a paper mate pen, rush right out and buy one. Once you try a paper mate, you'll see why it's approved by bankers and educators and millions of paper mate users. <laughs> More steak, dearie? No, I'm fine. I was starving. Well, I'm sorry I was so late, but you know how those meetings are. We had a lot to talk about today, too. Oh, sure, I know. First we call the meeting to order, and then we call the roll, and, and Mrs. McDonald ain't here, so we all start to work on her private life. <laughs> After we get Mrs. McDonald cut up like a watermelon on a fish fry, one of the girls leaves the room. She shouldn't have to have done that. <laughs> because by the time she gets back, she's been worked over from the seams in her nylons to the henna in her rinse. Now, that's not true, McGee, and it's not very funny either. Excuse me. We don't gossip. We had this meeting today to work out plans to raise money for our Christmas fund for needy youngsters. Oh. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of suggestions for raising money, but none of them were practical. Like what, for instance? Well, Monica Miller suggested we go door-to-door -door selling kisses for a dollar. Kisses? Yes, but then someone remembered that all the men are out working during the day and the housewives wouldn't be interested. Oh, well, I'm glad that one was nipped in the bud. I'm not having my wife go around from door to door kissing strange men. Harriet said that since only housewives are home during the day, maybe some of the men could go around selling the kisses. Hmm? You know, the men who had time, like, uh, well, like you and more toops. Hmm. Well, to raise money for poor little kids for Christmas... For a wonderful cause like that, I might be willing Don't to... Don't get too excited, lover. 
The suggestion was voted down. Whom by? Mrs. McGee and Mrs. Toops. Oh, them. The thing we finally decided on to raise money is the investment method. The what meant? Well, we have $80 in our treasury, and we have exactly eight members. So we split up the money, $10 each. Split it up? Oh, so the heck with the Christmas fund, huh? We split... No, no, no. We're each going to invest our $10, make money with it, and turn the profits and the 10 back for the Christmas fund. See, here's my 10. Hey, that's a pretty cute idea. Like buying stocks and bonds, huh? Well, something like that. Mm -hmm. Only most of the girls are going to invest in materials and make things like aprons and cookies and cakes and pot holders. Things they can sell around the neighborhood. Well, by George, you come to the right guy, kiddo. Huh? I'll be tickled to death to handle this for you. You know, I'll run that ten bucks up to... Oh, no. Huh? Heaven help me. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll drop everything else I'm working on and just concentrate on making money for you with that ten bucks. With my talent for spotting a good investment when I see it, I'll turn that ten into twenty, turn it into a hundred, and turn it into a thousand. Let's just turn it in. Look, McGee, I mean, well, you know people take advantage of you. Take advantage of me? When? Well, how about last year? Huh? That crazy set of pots and pans that man invented. You were going to draw out our life savings and put the whole $40 in that. What crazy set of pots and pans? The ones with the 12-foot handles. So you could watch television in the living room while you cooked dinner in the kitchen. Well, that opportunity's gone, but there'll be others. Believe me, your club don't know how lucky they are. I'm sure they don't. If I don't make a hundred bucks for you with that ten dollars, boy, George, I'll eat my hat at high noon in the Bonton window in the corner of 14th and Oak. Is that a deal? That's a deal. We could charge admission for that and raise a lot of money that way. Here you are. Nine dollars and fifty cents. Nine fifty? Hey, 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 where's the other half a buck? I'm going to buy a bottle of ketchup. Huh? That old hat of yours will taste mighty flat without something on it. Oh. <laughs> will be right back. For 26 years, the National Broadcasting Company has been bringing the finest in entertainment, news, and education into your homes via radio stations from coast to coast. During this past quarter century, more people have enjoyed more programs on NBC than on any other network. Listeners know that when they tune to the station where they hear the familiar three NBC chimes, they are assured of hearing the very finest of all radio entertainment. Now, every Sunday afternoon on most of these same stations, you're invited to join us beside your radio for a full hour concert from the stage of New York's Carnegie Hall by the NBC Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Arturo Toscanini. Each week, Maestro Toscanini will bring the musical magic, which is his alone, to the NBC airwaves as he conducts the NBC Symphony Orchestra. Treat yourself and your family to the world's greatest music directed by possibly the world's greatest conductor each week on the NBC radio network. The network which brings you the finest of all radio entertainment. Well, that's another week. Ah, uh, yes. We hope you all have a pleasant weekend. Yep. And I'm telling all of you right now that by this time Monday, I bet you all have Molly's Ladies Clubs Christmas funds ten dollars run up to oh thirty or forty bucks maybe at least. <laughs> Just for a starter. Yes, sir. Thirty bucks by Monday. That's my pledge. That's my boy. Good night. Good night, all. NBC and Paper Make Pens brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed. The old timer is played by Bill Thompson, and this is John Wall inviting you to be with us next Monday night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Weekday mornings, enjoy the Meredith Wilson Show on the NBC Radio Network.